Papona's EP team brings unique ideas shaking the EP world. In this episode six of the EP World Live series, you'll witness another breakthrough approach in Brugada syndrome ablation, performed by Professor Carlo Papone and his teammate, Professor Giuseppe Ciconte, and moderated by Professor Luigi Di Biase, witness a fresh innovative technique to perform safe and effective epicardial access. From the experts, you will also learn to recognize and map the epicardial arrhythmogenic substrate. And at the end of the live case, you will be able to define ablation strategy and procedural endpoints. Take the opportunity to participate with Papone's EP team. Click the sign up button below to register. More than 20,000 healthcare professionals from over 50 countries have already witnessed the EP World Live series. Check out the important moments from the last episode. Before to start the case, I would like to emphasize that in the pericardial cavity, we have this dense amount of effects. And usually the substrate of the cardiogenetic disease is localized in the middle of the fat. And this fat is extended not only in the right ventricle, but also in the left ventricle. In the right ventricle can be responsible of cardiogenetic disease. Uh, his extension to the left atrium can be responsible for uh, the progression of atrial fibrillation towards persistent and permanent atrial fibrillation. And the extension on the left ventricle can be the most important mechanism uh, for the progression of diastolic heart failure. Our end point is to achieve a shallow lesion. So just to homogenize this epicardial substrate and not, and not being transmural. Uh, to do so, uh, we move the cuff uh, we, in few seconds, so the ablation time will be very fast. Uh, it is sufficient like that. We don't need to prolong our stay in each point uh, to avoid the transmirality. Um, during ablation, it's also important to have uh, a retrieval of uh, all the fluids that we provide during ablation. And uh, this allows uh, a, a an adequate contact of the catheter with the epicardial surface. As you can see here, the bullseye is blinking in red, meaning that the temperature uh, at the level of transition in the contact with the catheter and tissue uh, is uh, increasing the temperature. And this is important to achieve uh, um, an adequate uh, radiofrequency delivery in this region. When we ablate in this region at the border between uh, right and left ventricle... Can you show the, the signals before ablation? Sleeping engineers, can you awake? Okay, let's, let's see here. Here you see the nice comparison. Before and after. And after. You see after on the left, uh, Alessandro, zoom on the carto signals. Bottom panel right, in basso a destra. In basso. Okay. So here you are looking to the carto screen with a... After arrow. you see very homogeneous. On Before the, double potential. On the left panel uh, you see the live screen and the live signals uh, which are nicely on the left, yeah. indicated with the blinking uh, arrow of the cart here, good. Whereas on the right side you have in the same area the double activity, which has been uh, nicely homogenized. So very nice, no more double potentials, homogenized region, and uh, the QT prolongation now is now 483.